of what so I is your thought. dude cool with sharing you with other dudes yeah. uh we do women right now okay. so not other it wouldn't be with other men just women not yet and why mm-hmm. is that um so the way we do it is we like we want to be very intentional about how we do it because the most important relationship that matters is us so it's not a free-for-all so for the first part it was just us we built our foundation we put our roots down and then we reached a point where like let's start having other experiences and we would just do one and then we'd reflect on it talk communicate was any boundary crossed how do we feel and we found that it actually brought us closer together wait do you guys have mm-hmm. oh yeah. so the thumbs with the other woman so you and another girl mm-hmm. and then him brought you guys closer together yes and even my own so because i'm on OnlyFans, i make content with girls so mm-hmm. i have sex with girls for my work oh you do Mm -hmm. and that also brings us closer together I had these amazing experiences and I come home and I tell all about the things and like I feel alive and energized and 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 did you say you were a mother yes and okay I have to ask yeah do you how old are your kids 7 10 12 and does it because I went to school with or there was a guy uh, like his mom drove a pink Hummer and she was a right and Mm -hmm. everybody dogged on him Mm -hmm. because you know and like it sucked for him and i felt really bad do you think that your kids would be affected at some point with like the fact that you did OnlyFans? no so i so my kids are very educated at their age appropriate level but i've asked my teen boys how they feel and it's like do you ever get picked on by your friends and they said no why would we even have friends like that so their friends don't even know they know they know they do know and they don't care what about other kids at school these are the kids at school that know. Well, I mean, like your kids have friends and then oh. there's other kids that they're not friends with. Um, I think, I mean, my little kids, they, I don't think their friends know, but as they get older, their friends know because I'm friends with their moms or their dads or their families. And so it becomes knowledge and they're just like, cool. And then some of my kids are like, here's how you can make more money. You should try this on Twitch. You should do this. Like mm-hmm. they actually like help me and they. Little Gen Zers. Or yeah, right, like they're just so yeah, open-minded. Not. They don't have the stigma and the judgment that I was raised with. Yeah. I have a question. Yeah. Earlier in the conversation, you made the statement, if I recall correctly, you put it, as long as you're at peace with your morality, that's what matters, right? Mm -hmm. Do you think that this kind of sexuality would be sustainable if it was like all across our society, like if everybody operated this way? I think a lot of people do operate this way. They just do it in secret or behind backs. Yep, mm-hmm. on accident. And, yeah. Or on accident versus... What do you think the percentage is? Like more than oh 10%, God. less oh, than yeah. 10%? Oh, the people well over 50. Oh, yeah, the people well, who come... You think it's well over 50%? I think it's well over 50% of people that, that, do would, what? that would rather cheat on their spouse than be openly polyamorous with them and open the lines yes. of communication. I'm and calling cap on that. I don't I think it's worth it. There was actually a study done where 70% of men have cheated on their wives at one point or another. So yeah, I think but I think I, 70% I would, quick, dra- quick, would drag a number up. I think 50 is probably a little high. I think a big thing, really? a big reason Maybe. I think yeah, it's I think been... So. At least I think in it's, my, I think at it's way in, high. At least in the generation that I am in. Yeah. Yeah. Your generation, really? maybe. For sure. We're yeah. all... Yeah. Well, this, this is, this but also also like your your social circle, like of my friends, like most of my friends, they're not interested in doing that. So this was... I can understand that. This was in part by design because the sexual revolution happened right in the 60s and the 70s and there was a sexologist named Alfred Kinsey Let's go. I don't know if anyone has heard of him but he was he's kind of known as the godfather or the grandfather of sexology today mm-hmm. and so his ideology has really influenced a lot of sex ed today and a lot of behavior today and so what he did he wanted to prove that everybody was sexually deviant was the term at the time sexually deviant they weren't in monogamous relationships or if they were they'd lie and they were in swinger culture and other kinds of relationships and he wanted to mainstream this idea because he wanted to break down the natural family, single mother, single father, together, married together, and with, with children. Yeah. And so what he ended up doing is he created social data, research data, and he would actually survey prison populations for their sexual experiences, and he would use that and claim that this was representative of the entire population. So actually, he would, say, he would ask, you know, interview convicts or have people interview convicts and who were involved in all kinds of dark stuff, and they would share, yeah, we've been involved, obviously, in bestiality, or we've been involved in having many different partners, and then he said, this is representative of, so 70% or 80% of Americans, he claimed, are involved in swinger culture or polyamory behind closed doors. But he was lying, is the thing. But so you're telling me that, that stat she just referenced is total I BS. I don't know exactly where you got that stat, but I think it might be a Kinseyan stat because a lot of his statistics 
kind of created the groundswell for that mentality. And then the problem is, it can become a self-fulfilling prophecy, right? So if everybody thinks, oh, it's normal to have sex with a, mil a ton of different people, it's normal to not be monogamous, it's actually good to not be monogamous, right? That's the message of society tells you. It's good to, you know, it's good, sleeping around is good, sex is not a big deal then it kind of becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy because more and more people get sexualized and get you know start down that path and unfortunately in our society too a lot of young girls i mean i heard what you shared kirsten right mm -hmm. it's horrible like with that guy i mean it's, it's ridiculous right but he was probably watching porn right so he's being trained by his pornography mm -hmm. to treat you like an object i mean he didn't even talk to you about it. he just did this gross yeah. thing to you and you're like <laughs> what the heck you walk out right but he was trained by porn to do that that's not normal like a little boy doesn't grow up and become that naturally as a man he's trained yeah. to think and become deviant and messed up i disagree because if you're gay you're gonna want it in the ass and as a woman i love pegging and i didn't learn that from oh. it's a desire i had mm -hmm. it's like i wish i had it sometimes and if i don't i'm gonna buy one oh. so to say that that's like like to say it only comes from is like such a when did you first when did you first realize you wish you had a dick sometimes <laughs> um, probably since i was little i've always been very sexual and have always wanted to f most people with two legs like i just like am drawn to <coughs> having sex and in my 20s maybe the late 20s i think the curiosity was there and like i didn't watch 20s i was a christian in a monogamous marriage but i had this desire and I was afraid of it. And then I learned that like, this is actually a common desire and like I've fulfilled it. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I love this. It like resonates with me and it brings me pleasure. It brings my people pleasure that I do this too. But outside of it, it's easy to judge and be like, ew, weird, gross, wrong. But yeah. inside it's been amazing for me and the people that we participate in. With you, but if you're, oh, okay. if you are happy, like having sex with the person you're having sex with, right? Yeah. What is the difference between you having sex with that person and you having sex with a different person? Like, why yeah. do you feel the need to have sex with everybody? It's not a need. It's a desire. And I think it's learning that it's okay to have desires. It's okay if they're not mainstream. It's like, if it's between consenting adults, like do what you want. Like that's the thing. Like no one's being harmed here. No one's being coerced. No one's being manipulated. It's like, I desire this. Do you desire this? Yes. Great. We're all on the same page. Here, here's a question. Do you think all desires should be acted on? All sexual no. desires? No. And so that's, which, a, that's, a, that's a common accusation. It's like, oh, well, then you're going to, like, bestiality is always thrown in there, which is so ridiculous. Can we not talk about bestiality? <laughs> oh, yeah. Sorry. I can't say that. Avoid sorry. that conversation. Um, but, like, they say people then assume it's all desire. It's like, no, it's like checking in and asking. And the, what I teach my life coaching is the difference between surface desires and soulful desires. What's a surface desire of like, God, what feel like really good right now is eating an entire package of Oreos, dunking them in milk and watching TV for five hours. That might feel really good right now, but my soulful desire is just to feel good, not feel gross in about five hours. So it's like checking beneath that desire. And so for me, I was always afraid of my sexual desires. What does this mean about me? Am I a cheater? Am I gonna hurt someone? I'm like, oh, I'm just a very sexual person who gets a lot of pleasure and connection out of sex. That's mm -hmm. actually a gift I bring. When I have sex with you, it's amazing. I bring my whole self to the table. And I've had people tell me, I've never had something like that. I've never been given pleasure like that. And to know that I could fulfill that for you, that's an mm -hmm. honor. So I want to go back to my original question. Yeah. If everybody had this same set of moralities mm -hmm. across the table throughout our whole society, how quickly do you think it would take for things to completely fall apart? I don't think that would ever happen. First of all, you don't, don't think that would ever happen? No. And I, cause I think that you don't, you don't, you don't think, uh, you, hold on, hold on, Chase, one second. Oh, yeah. Uh, if you guys curse in these, it doesn't trigger the robot voice. Uh, wait, let's what? pull it back up and read it. Yeah, I'll pull it back up. Um, I don't know why this one came over it, but what the frick? Hold on, it's, I'm re-triggering it right now. Uh, what is going on? Uh, yo, bad ZXC, thank for the 200. Just when I thought the... Oh. Just when I okay. thought the depravity could not get any lower in modern women. All I can say is you can only impress me at this point. Old 304, you think your kids aren't about to get the soul bullied out of them because of your phase is completely insane. Uh, your response. You. Yeah, it's just like I've already told you, my kids and my teen boys have said my, our friends don't care and they know. So it doesn't stand any truth to that. Like, so well, do you, might, do you, do you think, do you think if, sorry, mm -hmm. do you think if other families were practicing the same thing, their kids wouldn't get bullied? Um, I think kids get bullied no matter what, unfortunately. Yeah. It doesn't, right, but it's you not can, just you for can sexually give them, different families. That's the 
that's the thing here. It's like we try to stigmatize sexually different families as though they're going to be the only ones who get bullied. I have friends who are all kinds of monogamous, non-monogamous, married, single parenthood, and their kids are getting bullied for totally different reasons. It's not relegated to just sexually different right, families. But, but it's people, also putting a people, target on people, their people, back. Exactly. People will get bullied for all, for all sorts of different yeah. things, but that's not an excuse to give kids mm-hmm. more ammunition to bully yeah. do you, your do you kids. Think that, them do you think that teen, their teen sons are telling you the truth? Absolutely. I know their friends. Their friends know me. And we talk about it all the time because like, they're, we just have such an open family. Like, what if they didn't want to hurt your feelings? Would it weird you they're out like if, your, if your kids' friends were like watching your OnlyFans? Like, well, they can't. Well, they can't because you, you, be you have to be of age. You have to can't be you lie about your age? I mean, you have yeah, to have an ID. I don't, don't know how you, OnlyFans work. You have to get ID, but people like they, they, yeah, yeah, but, bro, the OnlyFans, they definitely they are, all over the They're definitely watching your content. They're definitely watching your content. They're definitely... Yeah. Doing things they shouldn't be doing to your content, but who hasn't done that to their friend's hot mom? Yeah. There's one right. more thing. Yes. I think right, there's, one more, there's one more important thing Guilty. going on here, though, because I think Guilty. this is something no. really interesting, Nick. You were talking about like sexual desires True. and mm. the desire to act out on our different sexual desires, and I think there's this mentality in our culture today that if someone has a sexual desire, then that is their identity. That can become their identity if they have enough of a sexual desire in one direction. That's their identity, and so. But I don't think that's true. I don't think we're defined by our desires. For I think sure. we're defined by what we choose. I love pegging, and I do not identify as a pegger. <laughs> it's like, I love threesomes, and I don't identify as a threesome. It's like, I'm Nicole Mitchell, a woman who's alive and in tune with what she wants and lets herself have it with consenting adults, and there's nothing wrong with that. I disagree. I all kinds of experiences, but it doesn't mean I have to identify as each of those things. I love Oreos. I'm not an Oreo. You know, it's like... We have to realize, like this, these are statements we say. As it's, just, it's there's no sub- substance behind it. No, I disagree. I, think, I, I disagree, think, Nick. I got to make a point. You Nick, go for it. <laughs> you, you say that there's nothing wrong with it. You say mm-hmm. that as long as you're at peace with your morality, yeah. it's fine. Mm-hmm. I completely disagree. Again, That's fine. I think I think if our entire society ran the way that you're kind of prescribing, where people just fulfill whatever quote unquote soulful desires they have. Mm-hmm things would completely fall apart. Like yeah. the values that she was preaching to Justin earlier when he, you know, he was getting a little bit annoyed by it, understandably, I, I what she was preaching, like, like I, I am here personally in the world to serve God. And I believe that one of the best ways that we can serve God is by sacrificing our selfish desires that might have negative impacts on ourselves mm-hmm. or other people. Mm-hmm. And these statements like, you know, as long as you're fine with it, it's okay. <laughs> like, there's ripple effects to our actions. In that statement, though, the assumption is that the desires are negative and that they will create harm. So but I have a belief that, that they my desires harm? are given to me by God, and by fulfilling my desires, it brings more good in the world. You think that they're given to you by God? Yes, what, I think what, the fact what, that I have a God? clitoris, which only exists for pleasure, not for reproduction, not for child rearing, purely for my pleasure, I believe there's a divine design where pleasure is our birthright. And so by me honoring my desire for pleasure, letting myself receive it, letting myself give it to others, hmm. produces so much good and pleasure and connection. I, it, it baffles me truly how people are so afraid of pleasure. They'd rather I sacrifice don't... and deny. And to, say, to push back on what you are saying earlier too, like if we did it all the way you guys preach of like husband, wife, monogamous marriage and kids, that's how society has been what the past 100 plus years. And it's women were trapped in marriages. For thousands of years. Women were trapped in marriages. They couldn't get out. And if they got out, they were ruined because they were their worth and value was solely found in that marriage. They could only provide That's not true. for so, yes. Women didn't have the right to own homes, open credit cards, have bank accounts, buy property. The reason the divorce rate is so high now is more women are so are we are capable to Fake be financially news. independent. So this is something I'm super passionate about because I think there's been a version of maybe fundamentalist Christianity that people have experienced that they they felt really hurt by. And so they've kind of lashed out against it and rejected it. And I see this a lot, actually. Um, But the reality is when, you know, I actually, so I was raised Protestant, went through this kind of semi-agnostic phase, kind of like you went through, and then I ended up Catholic after doing a ton of study and a ton of research and just being convinced by the beauty of it. And it was learning about how men and women are equal dignity, they're equal partners, learning about sex, what God's design is, which is a beautiful one, that it is about pleasure. It absolutely is about pleasure. And pleasure, it's not dirty or shameful, but it's also about procreation and the ability to bring life into the world. And it's designed to be within marriage where you're in a lifelong 
public commitment to someone that you're going to give yourself 110% to. And that's how you build a beautiful family of love and respect and your children are secure in your love that you have with your spouse. And so, you know, I don't know all of your experiences, obviously, and everyone has had different experiences, but the reality is the social data proves that monogamous lifelong marriages make people happiest they have the most sex and the best sex and kids are healthier that way and so that's why i know you're excited about that vision uh chase and that's why we want to share that vision not just because of some fundamentalist thing but because it actually makes people happier and healthier yep. in the long run yeah 